we started a new series titled The Attitude of Champions in Seasons of Change. When things are changing, how do you behave? How do you act? Things are changing all over everywhere. <laughs> See, whether you accept it or not. And things will continue to change. Change is one thing nobody can stop. It's inevitable. And in the second service, a first lady brought us a word from God, powerful word, collaboration. This year, you need to collaborate. There are many things you cannot do alone by yourself. God will bring you into good collaborations. You didn't say amen. amen. Zacchaeus is three feet tall, just three feet. He, he collaborated with a sycamore tree. That's what he did. It was, a, it was collaboration. The man is short. The tree is tall. And Jesus was to pass. And he wanted to see Jesus at all costs. So he climbed the tree. There are human beings that are sycamore tree. That will offer you their shoulder for you to stand. That they believe they are called to do that for you. They will do it without thank you from you. May God bring you to such people. You didn't say amen properly. Amen. People that will say, oh, yeah, stand there. And nobody will know you are not tall again. The wise man says, I can see further because I stand on the shoulder of those who have gone ahead of me. So don't look at me like I'm doing something strange. The reason why I can see further is because I stand on the shoulder of men and women that have gone ahead of me. May God grant you favor so that you too can stand on the shoulder of those who have gone ahead of you. Amen. You don't need too many shoulders to stand. One shoulder is enough. You don't need too many plug to plug. One plug is enough. May you not miss that one plug. Amen. There's one person your business will collaborate with and you will start producing, if you are into production, you start producing from tomorrow. Until December 31st, you will not have, there will be break. You will start producing from tomorrow until December 31st. You are still producing every day. You won't be able to stop because the demand will be more than your can, you can supply. You don't know what I'm talking about. One of our people here many years ago is into supply. He supplied 50 pieces, supply 100 pieces until he met somebody who said supply 300,000 pieces. He said, he said, what did you say? He said, I said 300,000. He said he was afraid. I've been supplying 150, maybe 200 at times. 300,000. What do you want to use? He said, that's what we need. We are into, we export these things. It's not even enough. If you do it well, I'll give you 500,000. Ah, the guy said, now, wow, what I mean? One supply changes story. One supply, one check. Change everything. Because even in one year, he doesn't do 300, he doesn't even do 100,000. Even in one year. And one supply, I pray for you. As you come to the communion table, the blood will connect you. Amen. The blood will connect you. Oh, you miss, you miss the testimony in second service. How someone among us has been connected to United Nations. There's nothing that cannot happen. He said, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. Stop thinking like it's you that will do it. You are thinking like you are the one that will do it. The person that will do it is, is your is your gakwata kwata of them all. He said, for with God, nothing shall. He said, with man, this is impossible. He said, but not with God. It will be a anything, insult to match man and God together. He said, with man, it is impossible. He said, but not with God. He said, for with God, all things are possible. All things. All things. All things. All things. Your dream, no matter how big it is, it's not as big as God. How big is your dream? The one who made the heavens and the earth in six days and rested the seventh day. I don't think there's anybody here that can match him. Not that I don't think. I know there's nobody that can match him. Just believe. Ever say just believe.
there are some of you here that in another 90 days, within 90 days, what you'll be handling within the next 90 days, in 10 years' time, you cannot even believe you'll be handling such things. If, I, if somebody tells you that in 10 years, that's what you'll be handling, you say, no, it's not possible. But within the next 90 days, I stand upon the authority in the word of God, and I decree God by his blood will bring them towards you. By his blood. Nothing can be impossible with him. His blood washes as white as snow. As white as snow. Your friends and families and classmates will be asking you, what happened? How did you do it? How come you found your name on that list? We saw it on TV. How did, you, how did it happen? You tell them God did it. Who did it? God did it. So in second service, we listened to a powerful message from our first lady, collaborating with the right people. Collaborating with the right people. May you be sensitive to knowing the right person. It can be the person sitting beside you now. And you have looked at the person and you felt he was slippers to church. And you have judged the person. And that is the person that will give you the next collaboration. Are you following me? Despise not days of what? Don't even despise people too. One of our young men in this church too, uh, Mandela Washington. That's how they invited him from Agege. I'm sorry, from U.S. And invited him to U.S. My wife's friends, she sells moi moi. They call her the moi moi woman. Obama's wife invited her to the White House to come and serve my mom, to come and cook her mom. So she said her first time in U.S., she has never traveled to U.S. before. Never. She was selling my mom in Nigeria. Her ticket was seat 1A. Ah, you want? The president's guest, you put him in 25? Eh? She was a president's guest. She was a presidential guest. She said the moment she got to JFK, come and see soldiers everywhere, mounted for her. She said, ah. He, look, the person that invites you will determine how you'll be received. This time, it is Obama's guest. And they walked out. Are you Mrs. They don't need to answer. No, Mrs. So, so, follow us. You see, you, you, are what? you will change how you work soon. You. Listen, listen. It should not be pride, though. You, it should be you, intentionally. Yo. It is where you are working that will tell me how you work. Have you got it some places and you change and you do like this? I, I have to behave myself here. Yo. This place is not a gege. This is not. <laughs> hey! Madam, follow us. Shout to. Ah, shout to. <laughs> <laughs> she had to, because she had to pick herself very well. And instantly her steps changed. Instantly. Her steps changed. CNN carried it. It was live on YouTube. And everywhere. Where Michelle tasted the moment I saw it. I said, wow, this is good. I said, ah, it has to be good. At this level, it has to be good. I prophesy. As you encounter Jesus, the Son of the Living God, on this communion table today, the right people that will change your story from struggle to success, God will bring them to your way. The right people. The right people. Who will say King Saul can prophesy? He was not a prophet, never been called as a prophet. Don't have prophetic gift, but he started working with prophets. And the Bible says he prophesied. So the circle you find yourself determines what you do. The circle you find yourself. God will bring you to the right circle. Yeah. King Saul started prophesying. And he said, ah, Saul, no man prophesied. He was mingling with prophets. First Samuel chapter 10. Are you hearing me? 
So get ready this year for unimaginable progress, unimaginable multiplication. I don't know why this is coming like unimaginable multiplications. A, a turnaround that will change your story for the best for the rest of your life. Are you ready this morning? So in the third service, quickly because of time, I'll be talking about collaborating with God. Collaborating with who? God. With God. Because after you have collaborated with men, you need God. Everybody say, I need God. He said, Paul may plant, Apollos may water, but God gives the increase. God gives the increase. So while we are collaborating with the right people, Please don't miss it. Collaborate with God in 2023. Partner with God in 2023. Work with God in 2023. Are you following me? Collaboration with God is necessary if you don't want to struggle. Except the Lord build the house. They labor in vain that building. You won't build what God is not building. Except the Lord watch over the city. He said, the watchmen are just wasting their time. Collaborate with God in 2023. Please, I beg you. Don't do it alone this year. Don't walk alone this year. Where God is not going, don't go. Once he has instructed, don't go. Please don't. And where he's going, even if it's not convenient, please go there. Last week, I made a very important decision very small daily decision we all make. You know, sometimes you wake up in the morning or you wake up in the, for the new week and you have the option of going to either A or go to B. Huh? And, so, and I wanted to go to A because it will have been my first day in office. And the Spirit of God said to me, no, this is where you are going. And I got there and I said, seeing what was going on, I said, this is, I told my wife, she was beside me, I said, thank God we are here. Thank God we didn't miss. Thank God we didn't say, we we'll watch it online. <laughs> a lady consistently was watching our services from United Kingdom. And one day she flew in to worship here. She has come twice now. The first time she came, she sat far at the back. It was first service or there about. When she had the opportunity to talk to me, she said, I've been watching online for months. And I said, I'm going to be here physically to see it. He said, the message of today is my message. Maybe that's message. God really wants her to watch it online. Maybe. Maybe. Throughout this year, you'll be at the right place. Amen. At the right time. Amen. You'll be doing the right things. Amen. With the right set of people. Amen. Sometimes God will say, don't go to here. Go to B, and you will hear him clearly. Please go to B. John 2, 5 says, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Don't argue with him. Let him have his way. That's how to partner with him. If you are collaborating with God, do it properly. Hallelujah. Luke 5, 3. This man, businessman, has been toiling all through the night. They caught no fish. Luke 5, chapter 3, verse 3. Luke. They walk, 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 walk. Not a single fish was caught. In verse 3, if we can have it on the screen. Luke 5, 3. He said, and he entered into one of the sheep, which was what? Which was Simon's. And pray. Now, that was after Simon could not catch fish. One man that was in his 30s, uh, in the early 30s, in, in physically, walked up to me and said, let me use your boat. According to a historian, in the Sea of Galilee, where they are, there is nothing less than 200 boats per time. It's like uh, the, the Sea of Galilee for fish business is like a cold dumata, always very busy. The minimum boats you can have at the shore of that sea, according to historians and scholars, is 200 average. So out of 200 boats that Jesus can use, he didn't try one before. He just walked straight to that of Simon's. Look at verse 3 now. Why are they taking it? And said, 
Can I use your boat? And the Bible says, and he entered into one of the ships, which was what? Simon's. And prayed him that he would what? Thrust out a little further from the land and sat down and taught the people. This year, God will enter your boats. Out of the several boats, he's entering your own boats. That was where the miracle began. Because if he had entered another person's boat, that miracle would have gone to another person. Don't forget, all the fishermen were complaining. They were all struggling. They were all saying they didn't catch any fish. They were all going home with nothing. So it wasn't like it was only Peter that needed a miracle. Everybody needed a miracle. Everybody needed a miracle. But you know when God is on your side and your time has come, you just make everything to fall in line. Jesus entered, stepped into that environment, and the only both he went for was that of Peter. There was something that probably, I'm sure he came for Peter. This idea of preaching and speaking the word from the boat was just to, uh, to, you know, you have to start with something. He came for Peter. Today he came for you. Yeah. Oh, I wish you would. Yeah. You've been in this crowd for years, it's, but today he came for you. Yeah. The testimony we had in second service, the woman of God said, after one service, I cannot even remember again, that I called her and said, there are not, it's not all prophecy you give from the altar. You are going global. That is for her. You see, when we gather, God comes for certain people. Yes, sir. There is a visitation for you yes, today. Yes, oh, I thought you would say amen to that. Yes, that day was Peter's day. Today is your own day. Yes, that day was Peter's day. When he said, Peter, can I use your boat? Peter said, was it was was the usefulness of the boat that we use the boat and please just leave me alone, don't bother me. After using the boat, go to verse 4. Let's go to verse 4. And when he had left speaking, that means he didn't speak for long, self. He said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your net for a draught, for a catch. After he had finished preaching from his boat, he gave an instruction to Peter, you see, he's going to give you an instruction. Every time God wants to move, he will give a word. God doesn't move until he has spoken. He will, he will give a word. He can say, he can give you a word like, do this or do that or, you know, he will give an instruction. The instruction God will be giving that will change your life this year, you will hear it. Amen. It will be clear to you. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. So he gave him a word. He said, launch out into the deep. Let's see how Peter received the instruction. Because if you want to partner and collaborate with God, how do you undo God's instruction? You cannot collaborate with God if you keep breaking rules. You cannot collaborate with God if you're not listening to instruction. So he gave Peter an instruction. And Peter said in verse 5, unto him, Master, we have toiled, means we have struggled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, notwithstanding, at thy word, I will let down the, how many nets there? Huh? Is it plural? Huh? Let's go back to verse 4. Let's see whether he is following instruction. Now when he had left speaking, he had said to Simon, launch out the deep and let down how many nets here? How many nets here? Let's go back to verse 5. Ah, Peter, did you see, you see the, the S? I will let down the... So it was partial obedience. He let down the net, but not the nets. Between verse 4 and verse 5, only God knows who edited the S. I think he's Satan because he's a thief. He has come to kill, to steal, and destroy. So when Jesus said, let down the nets, Satan whispered to Peter and said, you want to disgrace yourself? Reduce the disgrace, though. You didn't catch a single fish since last night, though. 
Instead of throwing 200 nets, 5 nets, you better just throw one net and so that this case will be very small. Peter said that's true. That looks very sensible. That's true. That's true. I'm not a fool. How can I just carry all, all the nets we have washed? It's not easy to wash nets. So he took one net and threw it. Let's continue the story. The next verse, verse 6. Verse 6. And when they had what? This done. They enclosed a what? Of fishes and their net break. Why would it not break? How many nets were you asked to throw? Why did you throw one? The one who said throw nets knew that the fish I want to give is more than one net. He said it now. He knows from the beginning. So when he threw one net, one net could not enclose the fish. It broke. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes. Anytime you see fishes, it's not just one type of fish, different types of fish. It's not just that the fish are more than plenty. It's also different species. Tilapia, uh, you know, all kinds of variety. So Peter had so many fish to sell. You see, it was a job bigger for Peter because he was the only one that would be selling fish after that event because nobody had fish to sell. He had fishes. Look at it. The next verse quickly. And when they had what? And, and they beckoned unto their what? Thank God they had collaborators. Thank God they collaborated with men. Thank God they had partners. Thank God it's only God they collaborated with. There are things that are special duty for God in your life. And there are things that are special duty for human beings. Human beings will not do the work of God. God will not do the work of human beings. So you need both at the same time. Paul might have planned. Apollo might have water. He said, who gives the increase? So you need God who gives the increase. You need men who will plant and water at the same time. All of them, you need them. The problem we have in the church is that we only collaborate with God. That's why we are struggling in Nigeria. That's why we have the crowd, but we cannot influence politics. That's why we have the crowd, but we cannot determine the next president. Because for many, many years, we're collaborating only with God and within ourselves, inside the church alone. You need to collaborate with as many people that are in your field that will be useful for you. He said, yeah, it's religion. You're in the marketplace, the only religion is money. There's no religion in the marketplace. <laughs> say, Pastor, I don't want to be dealing with uh, people that are not in my religion. Then you need to write in front of your shop for Christians only. Abi, if you're selling clothes, just write say, for Christians or for my royalty members only. <laughs> yeah, we we'll see how far you can go. 